Give her of the, fruit, of the fruit of her hands, and let her own words praise her in the gates. May God bless the reading of this word of baby Sue. Great. 
you know, Mother's Day should probably be called I'm Sorry Day. Amen? Some of you are laughing, you know exactly what I mean. Uh -huh. Should probably call it I'm Sorry Day. You might be asking why. Why would you say that? Why would you say I'm Sorry Day instead of Mother's Day? Well, you know, God, God did give them the job of trying to raise you. Amen. Amen. And not, not all of us are like Tyrone, perfect, <laughs> perfect, great men. <laughs> something, something he said like that. People he hears what every mom says. Amen. It really ought to be. I'm sorry, Dad. He knows that you were a handful. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knows those times you snuck out. <laughs> Nobody's going to confess. Okay. <laughs> he knows those times you've done things you shouldn't have done. He knows the times mom and, uh, was crying over you. He knows those times that you, you failed to say I'm thankful or thank you. <coughs> you know, this morning in our small group, it dawned to me, moms, and dads too, but moms especially have changed probably a hundred, two hundred diapers in your lifetime. You had one kid, that's a lot of diapers. And we, you know, guys, we're, you know, I don't know about you, but when I had to change my first diaper, oh my soul, you would have thought that it was a nuclear reaction was going on. I mean, my eyes were spinning, my head was spinning, I, was, I, felt, I felt like I was going to pass out. And my wife Betty said, you better get used to it. <laughs> then we had another kid. I thought, you know what, I ain't changing any. I know more kids. <laughs> Diapers did that. <laughs> you know, how we, so many times, you know, we failed to say, Mama, uh, I'm sorry that I wasn't as thankful as I should have been. I'm sorry for the time that I broke that vase and quickly glued it and never told you. I've done that. You, you have to have a We've all done that. I'm sorry for that time I went to school and left my toys out and you stepped on them barefooted. I get home from school. You never said a word about it. Because they forgot. Do that to I'm sorry for the time I forgot for the umpteenth time to do something that you asked me to do and I forgot to do it. So you went and you did it anyway because you were tired of asking me to do it. There are so many things that we're kind of sorry to our moms for. But I think maybe we're sorry today because we only try to honor them once a year. That's not healthy. That's right. Amen? Amen. I know you didn't come to church to, you know, for me to make you feel bad. I don't, but I do want to I, would, I do want to provoke you to think. Moms are precious. Amen. It's possible someone in this room did not have a mom, or maybe in their opinion did not have a good mom. But a good, God fearing woman is a precious thing. Amen. We thank the Lord for you. Would you take your Bibles, please, and turn to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Notice what it says in verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. But apparently word got out that Jesus was going to be in town, and so there was a crowd of people waiting for him to arrive. Verse 41, And behold, there came a, name named, a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he sought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, 
and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people flung to him. In other words, there were so many people there that it was, you know, engulfed with people. There was, he was being pushed around and that kind of thing. Just because of the crowd, not, not for any other reason. Verse 43. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living of, upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came and beheld him, and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood sank. Lord, stop. Just stop there and have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for loving us. Lord, we all have fond memories, Lord, of our mothers. And sometimes we are not thankful for all the little the hundreds of little things that they've done for us. Putting food on the table, maybe going without something, going without a pampering of some kind to provide for us. Lord, I thank you for our mothers. And Lord, as we look at this scripture, I pray you would speak to every heart. I pray, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified. Yes. Lord, we ask for an unction from on high. Put a peace in this room, Lord, that helps us all to be attentive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mother's Day. What a beautiful day of the year. I realize that some of you ladies and gentlemen have had your mothers pass on. Thank the Lord I have mine still. And we thank God for that. We thank the, thank the Lord for the influence that they have in our lives. <coughs> this morning I want to talk to you on the topic of when this lady, when she heard, when she had heard of Jesus. You've got to understand that Jesus was, it was, it, he, he was famous at this time, for, mostly for the healings and the miracles. Their word had gotten out that Jesus was coming to town and there was a man there named Jairus who, his daughter was around uh, 12 years of age, who was sick, and she was laying dying, and, and he wanted to come to Jesus and get Jesus' help for his daughter. This lady also hears of this man, Jesus, who's the healer. She learned of this man, Jesus, and decided that she was going to come to Jesus. The first thing she realized is that she had a need. She had a need. Look at verse 43. Verse 43 and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon the physicians, neither could be healed of any. She had a need. She realized her need. And I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful thing when you have a female who's a mother or a male, it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful thing when a person realizes that their help is only going to come from the Lord. I did not learn this early in my life. I learned it later in life when I was 19 or so years old. I had learned that without uh, God's help, I was going to be a mess. I had already been a mess and had done a number of things that I regret and still have scars over. But it wasn't until I realized my need and who it was that could fulfill that need that I came to Jesus. She realized her need. Now, I don't know about you, but there, there have been folks that I know, some in family, some not in family, that have had issues with drugs. And anyone will tell you that if a person has issues with drugs, they will never get help until they realize that they have a problem. Is that not true? They will never seek help. They will not until they realize that they have a problem. This lady, it was obvious for her to realize her need. She was sick. She had spent her money on physicians. She had taken all that she had and, and gave it to doctors and they couldn't help her. She had a genuine need. You know, there, there are uh, many doctors today, many counselors, many psychiatrists, many physicians in our day and age. And sometimes, in some cases, the only person that can help someone is the Lord. And you know what? If you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you came to that realization that you needed Him for salvation. True or false? True. Beyond contrary, be, uh, contrary to popular belief, contrary to popular belief, there are not all roads lead to heaven. Right. There is one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He has said He is the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Now when you look at her, she realized she had a need, but she realized who Jesus was. Folks were talking, hey, Jesus is coming to town. <coughs> Jesus is coming to town. And you're going to want to be there when he gets there. There's that already a crowd had developed. This man was there. His daughter was sick. And she lay sick and dying. And he wanted to see Jesus. She learned about it. There was a crowd of people there. There was a press of people. And, and, and as she was there, she had uh, determined in her mind that if she could just get close enough to Jesus, she would be healed. And folks, that's the same truth today. If you and I would just want to, to get close enough to Jesus, we're going to receive healing in those areas of our life where we need it. Amen. We don't put up a sign on the front of this church that says we're having a healing service. Because you don't have to come here to be healed. You just need to go to Him. Amen. She has spent all her money. She has spent all her time. She has spent all her energy. And the Bible says in verse 43 that the physicians neither could heal her. Look at verse 40 again. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received Him, for they were all waiting for Him. You know what? She learned of this. She was waiting for Him too. She had heard of His healing power. She had heard of the faith that was in Jesus. And she was determined to get close to Him. She knew that if she could just get close to Him and maybe talk to Him or, or, or ask Him for healing, that she would be healed. Folks, that's the same faith that you and I need in 2017. Amen. How many of us run here and run there and run over here and go over there, all of us looking for contentment, looking for healing, looking for something to fill that void? Listen, folks, Jesus is the void filler, amen? That's right. Jesus is the healer. He can still heal your husband today. He can heal your wife. He can heal that wayward child. He can heal your relationship with your, with your sibling or your parent. He is still in the business of healing. And all you and I need to do is get close to Him. Amen. Get close to Him. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 25. It's a parallel passage. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. She learned... Of the healer. She learned of the healer. Look at verse 25. A certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Did you read what I just read? She learned of the healer. And it says that she had spent all that she had, and that she had suffered many things with many physicians. I can't even imagine what she went through in that day and age with the type of medicine that they had. You know, sometimes we read these scriptures and they don't really, they don't really penetrate. Mm -hmm. This is not 2017, folks. There were no CAT scans. There were no ultrasounds. There were no x-rays. There was no imaging of any kind. The things that she suffered according to our standards, must have been barbaric. Yeah. The probing, the test, must have been barbaric. This lady had a serious issue, and she suffered many things of the physicians. It goes on to say she spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Look at verse 27. When she heard, when she had heard of Jesus, came in to press behind and touched his garment, where she said, she said this within herself, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And the Bible says, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. Wow. That's faith. Mm -hmm. She felt, man, if I could just touch his garment. You might say, this is Mother's Day. What are you talking about, folks? We need more moms with this kind of faith. Mm -hmm. If I could just get close to Jesus, just close enough, I know he's going to be healed. I, I know I'm going to be healed. I, if I could just get close to that garment. The Bible says that she pressed behind him, and there was a crowd of people. She was determined to get close to the Lord. Folks, you and I ought to be that way as well. 
When you and I have issues and problems and challenges and difficulties, we ought not allow these things to drive us further away from God. Those things ought to drive us closer to the Lord, Amen. not further away. The devil wants you to believe, well, Jesus can't do anything. Hey, what if the devil convinced this woman, you just want to touch the what? There's too many people here. Make an appointment. You know what? She wouldn't have been healed. But because she was determined to get close to Jesus, and she had the faith in what he could do, she was healed immediately. That word straightway in verse 29 means immediately. Here's my third point. I'm going through these pretty quickly. My third point, she was determined to get close to him. She wasn't going to allow, she wasn't going to allow the crowd, she wasn't going to allow distractions, she wasn't going to allow anything to stop her from getting close to the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful picture of a Christian. Amen. Today we allow simple little things to distract us. We allow so many things to come into our lives to interfere with our closeness to the Lord. And there's nothing more beautiful in 2017 than a mom who, or a dad or a Christian who wants to be like this with Jesus. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. Like this. But today, there are so many things that, that interfere with your relationship with the Lord, interfere with your relationship with the church, that, that, that interfere with, with anything that, that's spiritual or the things of God, and we just accept them, and sometimes we're the cause of those things. This lady was not going to allow the crowd to deter her from getting close to Jesus. <coughs> getting to touch Jesus wasn't as easy as it sounds. You know, we've got a beautiful little church, amen? amen. I, I praise the Lord for it. I'm not being proudful. I'm not being, I'm not being braggadocious. But God has been uh, so gracious and has blessed us with this little building. Amen. And when we say, get, you know, let's greet one another, it's not easy to get to the back. Right. You know, because and I don't want to stop that. I like doing that. Amen. Amen. I think it's important for me to get my hugs from all the moms that are here that are over 70. <laughs> Just put that out there, okay? Just so you all know. You know, and I, 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 I hey, praise the Lord, I get fired up at these three cheerleaders that are here. My mom's here today, too. Amen. I'm going to buy them aqua and turquoise pom-poms. No, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> You know, it's encouraging when we get to shake hands and sometimes I don't make it to the back before Jose starts singing and you don't make it to the front and we get to greet one another and guys get to, you know, do the man thing. What's up, bro? <laughs> you know, shake hands, that kind of thing. And, you know, the, what are the man hugs? Is that what they call it? A side hug, whatever. It, whatever. My point is, it is a challenge. Where you go? <laughs> No, if you're visiting, I won't do that to you. <laughs> this is me. I'm sorry. I, I, this is me. You know, I just, I, 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 I'm Fred Cruz. That's all I can be. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes I have to apologize for that, but that's why. But it's a challenge when we all get up to shake hands. And, and why? Because there's so many people in a tight spot. She wasn't going to allow a crowd or an excuse or maybe, maybe even feeling uncomfortable to prevent her to, from getting close to the Lord. Amen. And folks, what a beautiful picture it is of you and I. We ought to be so determined to get to the Lord that we push everything aside, that we knock things out of the way so that we can be close to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but there are some people that are uncomfortable around crowds. I understand that. I mean, I understand it. And, and maybe being in a such tight quarters would make you uncomfortable. You say, you know, there's just too many people here. I'll do it later. But this lady had a sincere, severe issue, and she wasn't going to allow an excuse or a press or a crowd or wasn't going to allow anything from preventing her from getting close to Jesus. And folks, can I encourage you? Get the things out of your life that are preventing you from getting close to Jesus. Amen. Because most of the things that we deal with in 2017, it's not crowds of people. It's not. It is extreme busyness. Mm -hmm. Look at Luke 8.42. 
We're going to be back and forth in these two places. So hold your place here and go back to Luke 8, please. Verse 42 says, they thronged him. That means a large, dense crowd. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I grew up in the city of Philadelphia. And a couple times in the summertime, they would be, they would, we would find out that they were giving away cheese. Brother Albert, you know what you about this? He started smiling. Right? They were giving away bricks. Bricks of cheese. I mean, bricks. They weren't pre-sliced. Uh, a box, right? And a big box. Like a massive box of powdered milk, which I wasn't found of. Terrible. But I think it didn't have uh, uh, lactose in it. But anyway, powdered milk and bricks of butter. <coughs> but, butter, like a pound of butter. And, and they would give something else. I don't remember what else it was. But I remember that in the neighborhood, where we, my mom started to smell too, where we learned where it was being given away, we would go like droves of insects. I mean, like, you still go for that cheese, Mike? Praise the Lord. Cheese go with you. But the, here's, here's how the cheese and the butter and the powdered milk come into play. Once we learned in the street, hey, the money, the, 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 not the money. The, yeah, if it were money, everybody would clean out the money. The cheese, they're giving out the cheese. We would go like in droves of people to that street. And sometimes a block away or two blocks away. And I'm not kidding. I wanted the butter because I would use it for popcorn. And I mean, I'd, I'd have butter with my toast, okay? That's how much I love butter. And, and, and the thing is, no matter, I, I remember, we'd all be rushing there, people boxing each other out, and moving people out of way to get in front of the line. And no one was going to stop Marissa from getting cheese. <laughs> or Patty or myself. Okay? But we were so determined. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter how many people were there. It, and, and oftentimes, the person who was in charge of it was a block captain, and they would say, get in a straight line, and we'd get in a straight line for a second. <laughs> and then everybody's kind of it. We were determined. And this lady, with this issue, realizing that there was a crowd of people, she wasn't going to allow this throng of people, this dense, large crowd of people, to stop her from getting close to the Lord. Can I say something to you? There's no crowd of people in your way. There's only one person. That's, right. That's your flesh. Your flesh is the only person preventing you and me from getting close to Jesus. There's nobody here saying, I want to get close to him. I want that butter. No. It's just us. But there may be a bunch of things that are in our way. You might say, what do you mean? There's so many things that people rather do than be in church. There's so many things that people rather do than read their Bibles. There's so many things that people are doing that interfere with their relationship with the Lord. Folks, set those weights aside that so easily beset you and me. I understand it's easier for me to say this because I'm at the pastor, but I don't ever want to allow anything to come in between me and the Savior. I'm not going to allow by the grace of God. I don't want to allow bitterness. I don't want to allow uh, 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 pride. I don't want to allow shame. I don't want to allow uh, discontentment. I don't want to allow anything to come between me and the Savior. Amen. The things that do that get in our way with our relationship with the Lord, oftentimes, are not people. It is just some things that we inflict ourselves with. Look at verse 45 there in Luke 8. Peter described the situation that it was a press, right? The press was an added amount of people. Okay, an added amount of people. That means that it was so crowded, <coughs> shoulder to shoulder. She wasn't going to allow, allow that to stop her. And the minute that she touched the garment, Jesus knew mm -hmm. that virtue had gone out of him. And he knew that someone had been healed. He knew exactly who it was. Mm -hmm. 
So you might say, well, why did he want her to confess? So that she would testify. Amen. You know, when you and I are healed, we're expected to testify. Amen. Amen? When you and I are receive an answer to prayer, we're expected to give God glory. Amen. When God comes through and provides this or provides that, you and I are expected to tell it uh, to people and let people know, not because of pride, not so that your head can swell up, not so that people can think you're somebody, but so that people can know and realize that God is somebody. Right. And that God still heals today, and that God still works today, and that God still answers prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me give you an example. Three weeks ago, I was preaching in a message, and I was talking about this little building and by, how by the grace of God, by the end of 2017, we were going to have that downstairs portion done by faith. Mm -hmm. I said that a few weeks ago. I learned of an opportunity, uh, a floor uh, that would possibly be provided to us again. I prayed about it. We inquired about it. Uh, and we, we sent the, the message. And then I get a message this week that a that, uh, company, Manatee Mills, was willing to give us the flooring. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the glue to go with it. God always comes through. But you might say, well, why did that happen? I'll tell you why it happened. Because God expects you and I to operate by faith. That's right. Now, God answered prayer. Thank the Lord. There's a, there's a connection there. There's somebody who works there and so on. But it doesn't matter. God answered prayer and provided. Amen. We picked it up this week. The minute I learned about it, I wanted to get it the same day before they changed their mind. <laughs> they weren't going to change their mind, but that's just how I am. It was cheese. <laughs> and butter <laughs> and powdered milk and I was going to go get it Tim and I drove down there thank the Lord they have a, a lift they put it on the truck I met the, the, the dear brother that works there and they helped us load it on there here five, five jugs of, of uh, glue that's probably $150 a jug I did the math of what that floor is worth. That floor is worth like twelve thousand dollars. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, how did it happen? Faith. Mm -hmm. How is it going to continue to happen? Faith. Amen. How did this lady get get healed? Faith. That's right. And you and I need to continue to have this kind of faith. My last point, number four. Coming to Jesus is still easy today. Amen. Coming to Jesus is easy today. Amen? Amen. And there's your last slide. How can a person be made whole today? How can we touch the hem of his garment? How can we receive his healing power in our relationships, in our homes, in our families? What if Jesus were coming to town? What if you saw on a billboard, Jesus is coming to town? What would you do to get there? Would you buy a ticket? Would you plan a vacation day? Would you carpool? Would you figure out how to get off work? Some of you all are good at that. Uh, yeah, supervisor? I'm not feeling very well. All right, get better. Lord, heal me. Oh, I'm healed. <laughs> I guess I won't go to work. I mean, we'll find all kinds of excuses to go do what we want to do, right? Thing is, I, I can't call out. The Lord laughs at me if I do that. Think about this. What kind of press do you have to go through to get it? What kind of situation? Do you have to push your way to Jesus? Do you have to shove your way to Jesus? Do you have to contend with other people to get to Jesus? No. Do you have to devise some plan or some scheme? To touch him, to get near him, to get close to him. Uh, do you have to take a number? I, I Taking a number thing annoys the fire out of me. <laughs> you know, you walk in and they have a big thing. Serving number 12. And you don't see anybody. Right? This is great. Pull the ticket, number 46. <laughs> is this broken? <laughs> no, sir, because everybody else went shopping, they took their ticket. Mm -hmm. And they called it all the speaker, that was a fire. I don't need to take a ticket to see Jesus. How about making an appointment? Mm -hmm. 
How many of you like going to doctor's appointments? Yeah. Your appointment is for 10 o'clock. You show up like a good person and, and, a, and a studious person, and you show up at 9.30, figuring 10 o'clock rolls around, and it's 1 o'clock, and your appointment was for 10. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? To annoy the fire out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I do know why they do it. They, they schedule multiple people because people don't show up. That way they can still get their money. But you don't have to make an appointment. And here's the last thing. You don't have to wait. Amen. You can come to Jesus today. You can come to Jesus today. You know what that is? Amazing grace. There's no one preventing you in the United States from coming to Jesus. You can come to Jesus today. Would you please stand with your hands bowed and eyes closed? Jesus is waiting and he's available. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, Jesus said. He says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, He says that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, the steady man should boast. You learn about this lady and her issue, and how she realized she had a problem and needed the Lord. She realized that there was going to be some challenges in her way, and she wasn't going to let that prevent her or stop her from coming to the Lord. She was.